Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First thing and foremost, we give all praises and glory and honor is due to you. How about you? How about shy about Shimon Kakodash? Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. It was in the gospel, brother, of the standard of you. How about you? How about shy, whatever it may be. It's the Aki and Mahalo. You're coming back with another lesson through the spirit. It says, U.S. says war appears imminent after shelling on Ukraine, Ukraine front line. Uh, man, this man is ready to go out, bro. Esau is... He's ready to go out of power. He can't, he can't take the crown no more. Like the brother said, the crown is heavy on his head. Esau is looking for a reason to, to be put out of his misery. He's, he's, he can't sustain it too much longer. All right? I mean, yeah, he's, he's in denial, but this man's ready to go down. Okay? He's about ready to give up his rulership. But that's going to come with a fight. Okay? Because we know through the spirit that Esau Eden was not going to go down without a fight because the scriptures say that the kingdom will shall be taken and through violence okay should the kingdom of heaven be set up so it's going to be a bloody transition <laughs> for this man going down because he's not just going he's just not going to lay down okay that's not an east spirit because remember esau is a son of isaac okay which which is the grandson of grand grandson of abraham he is a shemitic hebrew as well okay so esau come from warrior loins just to put that out there, as much of a cuck he is, much of a demon and a devil he is, uh, Esau's, he's really a warrior too, man. And we can't take that from this fucking devil. I mean, because Esau fights your ass, man. Like, I done seen some jigs get in the ring with Esau and got beat the fuck up. You know, so we can't put it past him because if not this, though he's the basis of men, but this whole movie is based on two main characters, Jacob and Esau. Okay? Ishmael is just a side piece. Uh, Moab, Ammon, uh, uh, Elam, Ham. <laughs> Ham is the side of the side. But be honest with you, this whole war is really based on Jacob and Esau. Now, at the beginning of the movie, Ham had a big presence in it, you know, a big presence. Ishmael even played a big role in this movie. He still have a, a mediocre role. I mean, not a mediocre. He has, he has a pretty uh, powerful role in this movie. Ham, Ishmael has a pretty heavy role in this movie that we're in, but the two main characters are pretty much Jacob and Esau. Okay, it's like your Wolverine, your Cyclops, your Gambit, and uh, your Beast, so to speak, you know, because Wolverine always, to me, been the most favorite out of X-Men. Cyclops was just a poster boy. Gambit was always a favorite too. Okay, people would sleep on Gambit, but nonetheless, Gambit was a heavy hitter, you know, but I don't understand why they didn't make his movie yet, you know, but... Regardless, man, this war is getting ready to pop off. And um, it's kind of like with this whole situation, I'm hearing on certain TV stations and certain articles talking about that Putin pulled out, that it was just a, a training exercise. But find out that Biden really don't know what the hell is going on over here, man. And this man is totally incapable of leading America to World War III. And on top of that, he just hired a Finn boy as one of his top uh, guys at the, uh, what do you call it, the, the nuclear or, or the Department of Energy, man, or the Department of, 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 of Nuclear Energy. He just hired a, a mo boy, you know, a mopad, so to speak, that have a high prominent role in what's getting ready to happen. So this place is getting ready to be destroyed. And you can tell the people, they're just ready to be took it, man. Okay. So I'm not going to read all this, but nonetheless, it says U.S. President Joe Biden said on Thursday... <laughs> That was now every indication Russia was planning to invade the Ukraine in the next few days and was preparing to pretext to justify it after the Ukrainian forces and pro-Moscow rebels traded fire in eastern Ukraine. It says the Kremlin accused Biden of stoking tensions and released a strongly worded letter which accused Washington of ignoring the security demands and threatened to unspecified military technical measures. It says Moscow also rejected the number of two officials from the U.S. embassy. OK, it says early morning exchanges of fire between Ukraine and pro-Russian separatists stoked an alarm with Western officials who have long warned that Moscow could try to create pretext for an invasion, saying that they believe such a scenario was now unfolding. All right. Because now that I was looking, they said that it's a heavy military presence that's built up along the border, man. And you have U.S. troops that's out there. You know, like uh, we just got some more information that, uh, you know, that the U.S. military, some people that were set to withdraw from it, uh, they may have to stay a little longer because for the simple fact, there's war in the Ukraine. OK, so a the most high, he has eyes everywhere, man. 
And it's a beautiful thing because, hey, prophets, we get whiff of everything before it happens, how it happens, and we kind of know the end game of it, okay? And that's the beautiful thing about understanding the scriptures, all right? So it says, my sense, and this is a quote, is that it will happen in the next several days. But Biden ordered Secretary of State Anthony, or Anthony Blinken to change his travel plans at the last minute to speak at the United Nations Security Council meeting on Ukraine. It says, Blinken told the council that Russians plan to manufacture pretext for an invasion in the coming days. But for one thing, America, they always manufacturing uh, uh, certain stage things in order to invade countries. So if they trying to do it, because technically Ukraine belongs to them anyway. So my thing is this, if they're planning to attack, to attack Ukraine and get it back, what make you any different for setting up the war on terror or the war on drugs and all that other shit just to promote your superiority in the earth? which seems to be a heavily Edomite tied trait. Okay, Esau comes up with the false narrative and then he goes in and then, you know, he does what he has to do, which is nothing with basically a devil, you know, creating chaos out of, out of thin air. But uh, anyway, it says Blinken told the council that Russia planned to manufacture a pretext for an invasion in the coming days. And this can be a violent event that Russia will bring on Ukraine. Or outrageous accusation that Russia will level against the Ukrainian government, Blinken said. It says it could be a fabricated so-called terrorist bombing inside Russia, <laughs> which America is good for that. They invented the discovery of a mass grave, a stone drone strike against civilians, or fake even a real attack using chemical weapons. It says Russia may describe this event as ethnic cleansing or genocide, <laughs> but Russia denies planning to invade its neighbor and has accused Western leaders of hysteria. Right. It says this week it said it was pulling back some of the more of 100,000 troops it has massed near the frontier. Also, Washington says Russia is not withdrawing, but in fact, sending more forces. So it's kind of like an up for debate type thing, man. So both sides are playing both sides of the fence because we know Babylon, a great America. They're good for harboring and false narratives in order to promote their agenda. Because at the end of the day, America, they want to go down to Iran. They want that land. OK, and that's the whole reason for the whole war on terror and all this other shit to invade Iraq, Afghanistan, because if they overthrew those particular countries, they would be closer to the borders of Iran. And they can go down there and they can steal that oil or whatever resources, the central bank, whatever they want to do, they can have it already on the map. So it's been Esau's agenda to get that land for the longest. And he's going to do it by all means. But see, what he's not banking on is the fact that he's going to run into a major stumbling block because invading Iran Russia's damn sure going to get involved. And that's when Israel comes to the attack to go against Iran, because that's inevitable, too. And that's prophesied in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 49th chapter, man, 50 and 51. So either way it go, man, World War Three, the stage is being set. OK, the tensions will escalate eventually because I'm going to say if NATO gets involved in this situation, I don't see them pulling out no time soon. OK, I can see a Regional wars or proxy wars turning into regional wars to conventional wars, then it's soon to be nuclear war. Because by the time that this conflict is at its peak, the American empire or the economy would have already collapsed. The MOTB would have been instituted. And due to the global collapsing of the society, that will cause the war to go nuclear because everybody's financial interests, their resources, you know, and their assets are on a line due to this weak ass dollar, which will make it want to shoot nuclear missiles, man. OK, which will make sense as to why NATO in the EU will turn on America. OK, uh, I'm speaking as a man, but through the spirit. OK, because the scriptures back this thing. It, it backs it up. It just it makes sense. Now, however it goes, the Lord can have it to go that way. But we do know that eventually World War Three will be nuclear. And we do know that the MOTB and the global economic collapse will have a lot to do with the becoming nuclear. Man, I can for, I can see that through the spirit clearly, you know. Brothers may have different opinions, but hey, it's all good because at the end day, America is still going to be destroyed. All right. So it says the absence and the readiness of the American side to agree on firm, legally blinding guarantees of our security from the United States and its allies. Russia will be forced to respond, including through the implementation of military technical measures. The document said it says Blinken said that Washington was evaluating the letter and that he had already sent the letter to Russian foreign minister. Sergei Lavrov proposing a meeting next week in Europe to try to resolve the crisis without conflict. And, you know, that's the, the, the mindset, you bitch ass American government, man. See, they're trying to dethrone. See, this is the this is what's happening. 
America is trying to offset Russia without offsetting it. They're trying to avoid any type of nuclear or any type of war with Russia at all costs. Because they know that's going to be devastating on the economy. And they know that that's a war that they can't win. Okay, Russia has weapons and weapons of mass destruction that will run forces around America's fucking weapons of mass destruction. And I'm just being real. The type of artillery they have now, America can't touch it. Only thing America has in this arsenal that will likely overthrow the Russians is your military, is, is your airspace, is your air game. But as far as your nuclear weapons, a lot of your fucking defense systems are outdated. Okay, you're not putting money into your defense systems, but you're putting more money on the offense. While Russia is putting billions and trillions of dollars into offense and defensive strategies just to destroy you. Okay, and you're trying to avoid that at all costs. So you're trying to get around them without getting around them. You know, that's why this guy Biden is trying to put sanctions on them. Okay, well, we're going to put sanctions on you. You're not going to be able to buy uh, oil from the Saudis and all this other dumb shit. Like, who gives a fuck? They don't need that shit. They got their own. They self-sustained, man. They don't need you. And they're proving that. They don't need you. You know? And, uh, but yet, you, you're trying to put hell on your own city. You're trying to bully your own citizens into compliance to your order. But supposedly, you're the dominant force of the world, the dominant military. But yet, you can't even get these nations in order. Because they define you, man. All right? So anyway, let's go into a couple of precepts here. This is the book of Isaiah 9. And I'm going to start at verses... Uh, Five, it says here, for the battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. Okay, that's shield and buckler. Like when you watch 300, we went to war with shield and buckler and sword. Same thing with the army of Gideon. Okay, the, uh, David's mighty men. We went to war with the Philistines. We didn't have no damn bombs. We had swords and shield and buckler, man. We were losing limbs in that war. But it says, but this shall be with Barney and fuel of fire. Meaning that this is going to be a nuclear war, man. OK, tanks, uh, uh, F, uh, what do you call it? B-2 bombers, man, uh, 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 targeted nuke strike, tactical strikes, you know, uh, Tomahawk missiles, ultimately nuclear missiles. All right. And it's going to happen because the scripture said it was going to happen, man. All right. So this is the book of Ezekiel 38 and one. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophecy against them, which these were Japhetic sons of Japhet, Japhetic lands, okay, which the Edomites assumed the identities by pushing the Japhites out of the land. This is the reason why we know that this is talking about Russia today, okay, because if you look at this narrative, this hadn't come to pass yet. So by process of elimination, if you look at who harbors and controls the land of Meshach and Tubal today, it will sit pretty much in the Russian Ukrainian area, which is Russia, which is the Edomites. OK, Esau against Esau. And it says, and thus says the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. Uh, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army and horses and horsemen and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords. Right. This is talking about war. OK, a war that's going to end all wars. World War Three. It says here, Persia and Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, okay? So you got the Iranians, there you go, Ethiopians, the Libyans, the Hamites, all right? All of them with shield and helmet. So this will be considered your eastern forces, so to speak, okay? China is going to be in there, North Korea, because remember, China and Russia, they hold each other's interests, and their interest is to take out the United States, okay? And even your own allies are not even really toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, because You've created so much division in the world to the point everybody's going to leave you out to rot, man. And it's deserving so because you're the responsible reason that the earth is in fucked up shambles in the first place. Invading people's lands, putting people in captivity, man. Stealing, stealing from your own allies, man, just to get your best foot forward. Okay, you're, you're creating a, a pandemic in the, in the planet Earth. People are all under these particular uh, scrutiny measures. And people are just sick of your shit, man. Okay. And the Lord is sick of your shit. And he's getting ready to do away with you. You're going down, brother. Go. You, I don't think you're going to see the year 2030, Esau. That's just my opinion. But I don't think you're going to see 2030, bro. It's, it's not looking too good for you. <laughs> you might not even make it to 2025, bro. And I'm just being serious about that. But we're going to see. Because the scriptures say we're supposed to hasten the coming. Lord's will, your ass don't make it out this year. But, you know, prophecy has to play out. And the sooner the MOTB prophecy comes about... 
then we can start counting down days, literally days to nuclear war. OK, because once the MOTB is put in place, like the apostle to her said, things are going to move quick. And the scriptures verify that because Yahweh Shah said, behold, I'll come quickly and my reward is with me to give to them. To roughly paraphrase, my reward is with me and behold, I'll come quickly to give every man his reward. And what's the reward of you Edomites, man? Slavery. OK. And it says here. Gomer and his bands, the house of Togomar in the north quarters and all his bands with many people with thee. Those are the nations. OK, you got Turkey in there. OK, you got uh, the north quarters. You got uh, uh, North Korea, South Korea, Japan. It's going to be a global war war, man. All right. And nuclear missiles will be used. And this is going to usher in the second coming of Yahweh Shai because things are going to get that intense to the point if Yahweh Shai didn't come back. This planet will basically Esau would destroy all life. This war right here will be the war to end all life on earth if Yahweh Shai didn't come back. Okay, that's why we have our faith that he's going to come back. Because let's just say if Yahweh Shai didn't come back and it was all bullshit, we're going to die. We all going to be destroyed because these devils will literally destroy each other in this entire planet. But we know Yahweh Shai will come back because the scriptures have been accurate in prophecy all the way up to this point. Even this war that we're getting into is playing out according to Bible prophecy. So... Why would Yahweh Shai's second coming be a false prophecy? It's not going to happen. He's going to come back and he's going to deliver the elect of Israel. All right. And it says here, be thou prepared and prepare for thyself. This is why the Russians are buying weapons. This is why they have uh, uh, basically uh, hydrogen bombs. They got a nuclear weapon that can reach this side of the earth in like 20 minutes, man. You got Satan too. Okay. You got the Tomahawk warheads. That's why the Most High told him to prepare. Okay. And it says here. And prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So, hey, Syria, they're going to, uh, Iran, etc. So, this war is getting ready to be all, it's getting ready to pop off, man. Okay, and I pray to you, how about you, how shy, that America stop acting bitch made, and they go ahead and do what the hell they're supposed to do, man. Okay, because we're ready to get the hell up out of here. Okay, I'm ready to get the hell out of here. I'm ready for, for, for deliverance. I'm ready for the kingdom. Okay. This is the book of Revelation 9. It's my last precept in 13. Matter of fact, 12, it says, One woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes thereafter, which your woes goes into your world wars. It says, And a sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before the Most High, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels that are bound in the great river Euphrates, and those are your four archangels. It says, And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, in a day, in a month, in a year. But to slay the third part of men. The third part of men is you Edomites, man. Okay, you Russians, you Americans, um, you uh, Turkish. Okay, or you can say uh, the Turks, because the Turks are Edomites too, and Ishmaelites. Okay, you got them Serbian motherfuckers, man. You got them Bosnians. You have a lot of Edomites in the world that the Most High is going to, and we're going to put their ass in captivity. But you American devils, you're the worst, man. You know, you're the worst. And it says here, in the number of the horsemen, were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in a vision, and them that set their horn having breastplates of fire, and of jasnets, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone, all right, and by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, man, okay, and like I said, that's going into you Edomites, mainly you devils in America, okay, because uh, the third part of men being the so-called white man, okay? Signs of the Most High, signs of men, and then you have the wood signs of the wicked, or the wicked, which is you devils, all right? And it says, for the powers in their mouth and in their tails, and their tails were like unto serpents, and has heads, and with them they do hurt, okay? So that's talking about the nuclear missiles. For those of you out there that say, oh, oh those talking about angels. Well, the guys I said that was talking about angels, they're not around to talk about, they're not around no more to even break that down wrong. So that shows you uh, where the truth is at because them niggas ain't around no more. They took a shaking bag. They dipped. Okay. Um, it says here, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues. And these is talking about other nations that wasn't necessarily destroyed by the nuclear war. It says, yet they repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols and gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented of their murderers nor of their sorceries. No of their fornication, no of their thefts. And these are the ones that we're going to put in slavery head first. Okay, because at the time of this war, you're going to still have society that's going to be going on as normal. 
though you're going to have disruptions, but you're still going to have society and people going to work. OK, people having babies, etc. OK, but America is going to totally be destroyed. No society or whatever is going to be going on this side of the world because, hey, this place is going to be destroyed. And these people are going to actually witness the coming or uh, second coming of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, man. All right. So I'm going to end it there. Giving all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And with that, Shalom and the Baba Ball. Ancestry has helped me really understand my family's immigration experience and what life must have been like for them. And as I pass it on to my daughter, it's an important part of understanding who we are. Russian armed separatist is heating up and it's a real flashpoint. This morning, tensions escalate on Ukraine's eastern border. Ukraine has accused the Russian-controlled separatists there of firing on a village controlled by Ukrainian troops, accusing them of hitting a kindergarten. Images of the school circulating online and on Ukrainian TV showing a hole in the wall and a damaged roof. At the same time, those Russian-controlled separatists are accusing Ukrainian troops of launching large-scale shelling of civilian areas they control. No independent confirmation and all this amid fears that Russia may be looking for a pretext to attack. And Russia has announced an investigation into claims of alleged mass graves of civilians in those Russian-controlled regions of eastern Ukraine. The victim supposedly killed by Ukrainian forces. The claims are unproven. Mr. Putin, if he decides to invade Ukraine, will need to fabricate an excuse to manufacture a reason to go in so that he conv convince his own people and try to convince the rest of the world that his motives are legitimate. Overnight, the White House claims as many as 7,000 additional Russian troops have arrived near the Ukrainian border in recent days. We've also seen a continued problematic, troubling uh, buildup of troops at the border and surrounding Ukraine. Nevertheless, Russia continues to claim that it is moving some troops away from the border, even releasing videos which they say show their forces packing up and leaving. And now the Biden administration with an all-hands-on-deck diplomatic push. This morning, we visited the bomb shelter beneath an apartment building here. Blast door, yep. Yeah. And while Oksana Hadil, a mom of two who manages many buildings for the city, showed us around, the reality of the threat hit her. Could you imagine that this might actually be used in war, this shelter? No, she says. I could never have imagined that there could be a war. Oksana's two children, like children across this country, are now doing drills in their schools, preparing for a Russian attack. It's getting real for people. In the two weeks I've been here, it seems that Ukrainians have shifted from skepticism that anything would happen to disbelief that it could, now to fear that it might. George? Yeah, that is a real change. Okay, Terry, thanks very much.